everybody, and welcome to Cooking It Real. I'm Kathy, and I'm glad you're in the kitchen with me today. The big game is next Sunday. You know what I'm talking about, the Super Bowl. Now, did you know that the Super Bowl in the United States is actually the second biggest eating day of the whole year, second only to Thanksgiving? I don't know about you, but I'm not a huge, huge football fan. Well, not anymore anyway. My favorite football player, he's retired now. So, frankly, I don't care who's playing. But I do like to watch the Super Bowl. Why? A couple of reasons. One, because everybody's watching it. It's the most watched game, the most watched sporting event of the year in the world. I don't know about in the world. Maybe in the U.S. But if I'm not in it for the game, I definitely like to watch either for the halftime show or maybe the commercials, uh, but I'm definitely in it for the snacks. Absolutely in it for the snacks. Today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you three recipes. Two of these dishes are savory, one is sweet, and all three have something in common, and that's the best part. What do they have in common? They're good for you. These are healthy snacks. The first recipe is a new one for me, and I've been dying to try it. So today's the day. It's called sea salted quinoa pecan brittle. Did I say pecan? I never say pecan. I meant pecan, pecan brittle. And let's just take a quick look at the ingredients. The first thing we have is quinoa and the pecans. This is uh, chopped pecans chopped up pretty small. Whoop, drop one. Honey, some maple syrup, some vanilla, some butter, a little bit of olive oil, brown sugar, sesame seeds. I have a mixture of black and white and a little bit of salt. And then I have a finishing salt. The recipe calls for Malden sea salt, which is like a fine flaky finishing salt. I don't have any of that, but I'm just gonna use a little bit of my, grind a little bit of my pink Himalayan salt on top. The first thing you wanna do is take one quarter cup of quinoa. You can use either a mixture of all the colors or just the red, just the white, just the black. It's up to you. And you want to put it in a very fine mesh sieve. So you have to have very fine mesh or else it's all going to just go right down the sink. And you want to rinse it under cool water for about a minute. The reason you do this is because quinoa is coated with a natural coating called saponin and that can be a little bit bitter. Okay, we wanna set our oven to 325, and then we wanna prepare our pan. This is a half sheet pan that I have lined with foil. Uh, you wanna make sure that the foil is covering all edges because this is gonna be a brittle, uh, like a peanut brittle, and it's gonna spread. This is avocado spray, and we wanna generously spray this pan. And we're gonna put that aside for just this moment. Now we need to have a microwave safe bowl, medium sized bowl, and to this we're going to add our two tablespoons of butter or one tablespoon of olive oil, maple syrup. This is a quarter cup of pure maple syrup. This is not pancake syrup now, this is the good stuff. A quarter cup also of honey. Now you can either use all honey or you can use all maple syrup or you can do any kind of ratio that you like. Now, like I said, I think I said, this recipe is brand new to me. I'm gonna make it exactly how they say to make it in the recipe and probably over the course of time, I will put my own spin on different things and you can do the same. Okay, then we're gonna add three tablespoons of brown sugar. That's like three little knobbies of brown sugar. And I have one teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, one and two. We're gonna put this in the microwave. We're gonna start with like about 45 seconds. What we want to do is make sure the butter gets melted and the sugar gets dissolved. Okay, that's 45 seconds. Looks like we could use maybe about 20 more seconds or so. Okay, this turned out to be about a minute and a half. It's looking pretty good. But now, we wanna add our black sesame seeds. 
our white sesame seeds, give that a little tiny stir, add the pecans, cup and a half of chopped pecans. You don't want to turn them into dust, although if you chop them yourself, there will be some dust in there and that's perfectly fine. If you buy them in the bag, you probably want to buy the bag that's called pecan chips. Everybody in. Give it a stir. And this baby, this is our brittle. So now we want to get our pan, prepared sheet pan back. Okay. And we want to pour, pour this on. Try to get as much of that out as we can. Let me see. I think I've got a spatula over here. Okay. And you don't have to worry if it doesn't get over to every nook and cranny. It will spread out in the oven, the liquid part especially. All right. You want a nice thin layer, nice even layer. Oh, I hope this turns out because oh, it smells so good. We're going to put this in the oven for 15 minutes and then 325. After 15 minutes, we're going to rotate it so both sides get even cooking. Uh, and then you want to make sure in the last like five minutes or so that you got a real good eye on it because you don't want it to burn. All right, let's go for the first 15. Hold everything. Okay, who caught that? Whoever did is got brownie points from me. I forgot to add the quinoa. Huh. Oh my gosh. All right, let me get it. Cooking it real. Cooking it real. Making a mess. Messing things up. Cooking it real. All right, I'm just going to see if I can't just mush all this around some let's bring it all together <sighs> now how often do things like this happen to you in the kitchen especially when you're trying something new huh mercy alive and i have the recipe right here and i am referring to it I'm not winging it, although you'd think I was with what I just did. All right, we'll mix it up and give it another spread. Still smells awesome. Oh, gosh. Oh, mercy. What do you think? You think this is going to turn out? Tell me, tell me what you think in the comments. Tell me if you've ever had a, an oopsie that you caught at the very last possible second. I think if this had been in the oven for, you know, I think it was only in there for like 10 seconds. I turned around and saw the, saw the, the salve with the quinoa in it sitting on the towel and said, oh no, oh mercy. Okay, good enough, here we go. Back in the oven with you, my friend, 15 minutes. All right, look at that, that looks beautiful. So I baked this at 325 for 15 minutes, then I rotated it, uh, baked it for another 10 minutes, and I wanted to check it. Uh, when I checked it, I gave it another two minutes, and I like the looks of this, so I'm calling it done. So that was a total of 27 minutes, okay? Your oven may vary. Now I'm gonna take my uh, pink Himalayan salt, and I'm gonna give a couple of grinds into this bowl. The recipe says, to use Malden sea salt, which is like a fine flaky finishing salt, but I don't have that. So I'm just gonna use this. And I don't know how much this is. This looks like, oh, not even half a teaspoon. Might not even use it all. But I wanted to put it in the bowl so I could put eyeballs on it. So I'm just gonna sprinkle it just lightly over the top. There's a little bit of salt in it, so you don't need much, but sometimes a little bit of sweet. Needs a little bit of salt. Whee! And hey, it's Super Bowl, so let's get crazy. Here we go. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pan. It needs to cool completely before we do anything with it. So I'm going to put it on the back counter, and we'll come back to it, uh, and we'll get ready for our next recipe. This recipe is one that I have made before, so it should turn out 
a little more successfully. Not that that one wasn't successful. We'll have to see, but I think I'll have a little less trouble with this one. At least I hope so. Okay, let me first show you the ingredients. I am doubling this batch because I want to make two different kinds of flavors. This is crispy, crunchy chickpeas. Now what I have here is a cup and a half of cooked uh, chickpeas or gobanzo beans. I made these in my instant pot, but you can use a can of beans. This is like a 15 ounce can, which is about a cup and a half of beans. Um, if you use it in a can, make sure you drain them well and put them on a plate or a tray and make sure you dry them as much as you can. All right. So we get a cup and a half of chickpeas. We have one tablespoon of olive oil and we have my seasoning mix, a generous half teaspoon of salt, about a half teaspoon of pepper, half teaspoon of onion powder, granulated onion, a little bit less of granulated garlic. This is a teaspoon and a half of smoked paprika, a generous teaspoon of ground cumin, and this is about a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now you can adjust this to your taste. And this dish is something that uh, can go with a variety of flavors, and we'll talk about that. But first thing you wanna do is you wanna get a bowl and a spoon, and you wanna get your chickpeas into the bowl. Put the olive oil in, stir them all around so they're all coated with olive oil. Oh, and you also, if my oven is still on, so I just wanna make sure that I turn it up to 375. Let me go do that right now. Okay, and now we wanna take our spices, and I'm just gonna kinda mix them all a little bit with my fingers so they don't, they don't get like too much of one thing in one place. All right, everyone in. I'm gonna mix this up. Try to coat all the chickpeas. And turn it onto, this time I have a small sheet pan and I don't have any kind of foil or anything like this. I'm just gonna give it the slightest of sprays. Because there's plenty of oil on these chickpeas. We really don't want it to be too, too wet to anything. Get that extra flavor in there. We want to spread these out and we are going to put them in the oven and bake them at 375 for 30 minutes and at which point they'll be drying out. They'll be starting to get a little bit uh, crispy. We're going to uh, open the oven. We're going to shake the pan, get them all tossed around again and put them in for another 20 to 30 minutes, depending on your own oven. Now, because I'm making two flavors, I'm just gonna put this aside for right now and bring on my next candidate. All right, cup and a half, chickpeas, tablespoon, olive oil. Uh, I, got, I got some salt here. And this recipe, my usual recipe doesn't call for salt because there's salt in my flavoring, which is the ranch seasoning. But sometimes when I make um, sourdough crackers with the ranch, it needs a little bit of salt. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to add a little salt. All right. Get a new bowl. Put in your chickpeas. Could this be easier? Oil. And like I said, you can do this with all kinds of flavors. You could do like a, like an herbal um, roasted chickpea. It could be, you know, like basil, oregano, rosemary, those kind of herbs. You could do like a, um, a sweet one with like some sugar and cinnamon. Uh, you could do like Indian spices, like a curry powder and um, that sort of thing. All right. I'm just getting carried away here. All right. I'm going to put in my ranch powder. This is, what I did was I, I used the same amount of seasoning of a, of a mixed powder like this as I did with my individual spices. So it all added up to about two and a half teaspoons. Okay, so that's what I used. Two and a half teaspoons. We want to coat this really well. The powder kind of melts into the oil so you can't see it as well as you can the darker spices and this is my quarter cup teaspoon i think i'm going to just do like quarter 
teaspoon of salt. That's going to be good enough. We'll see. Let me give it a little spray. Just a little. And in you go. Shake it around. 375 degree oven for 30 minutes to start. All right, here we go. After 30 minutes, give them a good toss. Now back in the oven for another 20 minutes. After another 20 minutes, they're done. They're good to go. You can plate them now, or after they cool in the pan, you can store them for later. After the sea salt quinoa pecan brittle had cooled for a little over an hour, I began peeling the aluminum foil back and breaking off the pieces. Uh, on the edge, the pieces came off fairly easily, but I struggled with the middle. I will talk more about that towards the end of the video. Now for our third recipe. First, I wanna mention that both the um, salted quinoa pecan brittle and the crunchy crispy chickpeas can be made ahead, way ahead. And the chickpeas actually can be made ahead and stored in an airtight air container, and they will be good for a long, long time. And before we get to our last recipe, I would like to ask you to please give this video a thumbs up if you are enjoying the content. If you like to see me make big, huge mistakes and mess up and try to find my way out of it, um, I would appreciate that thumbs up. It helps people to find my channel. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Those of you who are subscribers and new subscribers, I'm so glad to have you on board. All right, here we go. Our final recipe is buffalo sriracha cauliflower bites. Let's take a look at the ingredients. We start with a good size head of cauliflower that I have cut into florets. This is approximately eight cups. We also have some butter that we need to melt, some lemon juice, salt, olive oil, and two kinds of hot sauce. We have a prepared hot sauce. This is Texas Pete, and we have sriracha. If you don't have sriracha or you're not a fan of sriracha, you can just double up on the hot sauce. And it doesn't have to be Texas Pete either. You can use Frank's hot sauce. You can use uh, Crystal, Louisiana, um, whatever your favorite hot sauce is. The first thing we want to do is set our oven to 425 degrees. I have a large sheet pan and I want to give it a nice good spray of cooking spray. I want to take my eight cups of cauliflower and add my two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And get everything nice and coated. We're going to turn these cauliflowers out onto the sheet tray and we're going to bake them in the oven, like I said, at 425 for about 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, what you don't want to do is cook them until they're all the way soft because they are going to be going back into the oven once we sauce them. So we're just kind of giving them a, a, a quick start. All right, save this bowl. 425. Uh, I'm going to just do 10 minutes to start, and, uh, and we'll see how things go from there. All right, and I'll be right back. We're going to start to make our sauce. We're going to start with our one tablespoon of melted butter. I'm going to put it right in there where we just had the cauliflower and the oil. We want one tablespoon of lemon juice. We have two tablespoons of the Texas Pete hot sauce or your favorite prepared hot sauce. And I have about almost two tablespoons of the sriracha. Now, you can totally adjust this to your taste. I was supposed to put uh, a teaspoon of salt onto the cauliflower that's in the oven, but I didn't. So I'll just, I'm just gonna add it to the sauce. 
It's all going in the same place, right? All right now here is the cauliflower after 10 minutes. As you can see, it's not soft. It's still got some firmness. It's starting to get a little bit of brownness, which is good. That's good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put all of this right into the sauce. Everybody into the tub. Into the hot tub of love. Give this a mixy mix. If you're used to buffalo wings, which are darn good, who, who am I kidding? They're the best stuff going. But you just want to take it a little bit lighter. These are an awesome substitute. I kid you not. Get all the juice going. Boop. And they're going to go back in the oven for about five minutes. Now, the other two recipes, like I said, can be prepared way ahead. And we're going to talk about each one in detail as soon as they're all finished. But this one, uh, you, can, you can prepare it and then put it in the refrigerator. You can do it a day ahead, two days ahead, whatever. But when it's time to serve it, you're going to want to take it out, put it back on a sheet pan, and put it in the oven at 425, uh, get it warmed back up. Okay? All right. Let's give this guy five more minutes. Y'all saw me struggling trying to get the um, pecan, quinoa pecan. <laughs> Woo! The name gives me as much trouble as the dish did. The sea salt quinoa pecan bites. Uh, it was really nice around the edges of the tray, but it was hard to come off in the center. And I don't know whether that was because it was maybe not cooked enough, or maybe it was a little too thick in the middle. I don't know. But what I am going to do is I'm going to, when my oven cools off, because this start, this was at 325 and my last dish was at 425. So I have to wait for things to come down a little, but I'm going to put that I'm going to put the rest of this back into the oven and see what happens. Uh, if anything, it's a grand experiment. But I just want to show you what this looks like. It's not so much a brittle, although it does, it is quite beautiful. Let me get a big piece so you can really see. There we go. See that? Oh, and here's the back side. You see that? It's more like a toffee than a brittle see because it's it's not snappy it's more bendy but it's still delicious i did taste it i couldn't help it i'll give it a taste for you mm. a unique combination of textures and flavors i love it now this can just be a snack on its own this would be great like stirred into your yogurt or ice cream or something like that absolutely delicious my only Thing is, if you have like dental work, it is kind of sticky on your teeth. So you might want to take that into consideration. Hey everybody, Editing Kathy here. I just wanted to jump in and talk for a minute about what I actually did to try to save the sea salt quinoa pecan brittle. I put it back in the oven at 325 for about 10 minutes. And then I took it out and I let it cool for several hours. And I think that was the trick. Here's a piece after it was done cooling for several hours. Now it's much darker, if you can tell, and it is much more uh, brittle. Oop, I dropped that one. Anyway, it is nice and crunchy. It doesn't stick to your teeth anymore. And I think that's the ticket. All right, next we have our crispy crunchy chickpeas. These are the ranch dressing ones. Let me give that a taste. Mmm. Very good. They're crunchy. If they taste like ranch, um, you could probably stand a little bit more of the ranch powder in it. Maybe a little bit more salt too. That wouldn't be bad. Let's try the other ones. Mmm. These ones look so much darker but it's not because they were cooked any differently just the color of the spices mm. Mm. these ones aren't as crispy i wonder why 
These might need another turn in the oven too. That's what cooking it real is all about. And the good news is, if you had made these in advance, you have time to give it a little more. You're not doing this 10 minutes before everyone shows up for kickoff. You know what I'm saying? Tasty though, very tasty. And last but not least, our Sriracha Hot Sauce Cauliflower Bites. Now these are so pretty. And like I said, you can serve them with ranch or blue cheese. I personally like blue cheese, but all I had was ranch. So we're going to do the ranch today. I'll just take a little one. Now they're, they're tender, but they're not um, hammered. Mmm. Mmm. Spicy. Not too spicy, but definitely a good kick. I mean, you would not be feeling bad if you couldn't eat those chicken wings and you only had these, you'd say, it's just as good. Well, I hope to see you all next time, and I hope your team wins. Bye, everybody.